We will begin from uh, six lines from the bottom of the Avlam and Tesla, with Beis, Rami, Rav Tuvi, Bar, Rav Kisna. About six lines from the bottom. Rami, Rav Tuvi, Bar, Rav Kisna, Rav Tuvi, the son of Rav Kisna, asked the, a contradiction, the Rava, to Rava. Tanan, we learned in our Mishnah, if you do one good mitzvah, it's going to be very good for you. Also, only if you do a good mitzvah in if only if you have an active uh, action, then you get uh, rewarded in this world. But if you don't do any good action in this world, you will not get any reward in this world. Remini, I'll ask you a, steer, uh, a question. Yosha, uh, the post, the, the Brisa says, if someone sits, he sits and does nothing. And he's not uh, committing a sin. He's just sitting and, and dumbing out. You get the reward as if you did an action of as if you did a mitzvah. So how do you reconcile these to to our mission with the brisa? Amalei. So first of all, the brisa is very difficult to understand. You sit and not do anything, you're getting rewarded. Amalei hasam over there. So Rabbi answered over there that brisa is talking about a a sin, an opportunity to do a sin, particularly in the Indian of Arias and. Uh, and he was saved from it. In other words, you have to have Zuchusim to be saved from it. It's not simple. Yehoah, like the case, like the following story. Ravchini Bar Papi, Ravchini Bar Papi was a good looking man. Tevatehi Matrunisa, this uh, noble woman, uh, propositioned him for uh, for sex. Omar, he said, Milsa Umal, um, um, uh, he said, Omar Milsa, he said the uh, God's name or something like that, uh, Ravchinina. And he was able to bring on himself boils and things that made him look uh, ugly. So in order to avoid sinning with this uh, noble woman of the Hegel, so she did something, Mistasi, and he got and he got uh, uh, healed. So Arak, Arak. He ran out. Tosha bahi bebani the he have all in betrayed. I feel be on the He went. Uh, uh, he went and ran away to this place to, that in this place, even during the daytime, uh, you get, it was a very dangerous place. So he went into this house, let's say, even that if you go into this abandoned place, even during the daytime, uh, and even if you go with two people, something bad's going to happen to you. So it was like a very haunted house. And nothing happened to Rabbi Bar Papa as he ran to, ran away. Lamacha the next day, the Amr lay the Rabbanon. So Rabbanon said to him, "Man Natra, who guarded you that night? Uh, because certainly there's there's a good chance that you would have been damaged, and and something would have happened to you via demon." Amalhu. So he said. So Rabbi Bar Papa said, "Shnei, Shnei noisei kesa shemuruni kol halayla." There were two uh, officers of the Caesars that guarded me. Uh, uh, the entire night. So he said, I was protected. I was protected. And we see from this, that's the prop shot in the Brysa. Um, the Rashi says in the Ahmed Beis, if you have a chance, an opportunity to do a sin, and you overcome your Yetzirah, and you did not do the sin, ain mitzvah there's no greater mitzvah than that. So it was a fascinating Rashi. You have to say that you can do uh, mitzvahs, active, active mitzvahs, but holding back, Yetzirah and not and not committing a sin. There's no greater mitzvah than that. So back to the Gemara. So the the conversation Rabbi and Papape had with the Rabbanan was he was saying that uh, two two Roman officers were guarding me a whole night on the lay. So the Rabbanan told him Shem Edvar Eber Bali Yatchav and Itzal Tamanet. You must have. It's not simple. Uh, you must have had a situation where an opportunity arose that you should do znus and you were saved from it. The Tanina we learned in the Mishnah a brisa Kol Abad Var Yel V'Liyadi. If somehow he's put in a position, a test, where he has the opportunity to commit a sin of Arias, then it's so many was saved from it, or he's in a nest, and a miracle will happen for that person. The Gemara tells us, The people who have strength, that do his words, to hear the sound of his, uh, of his speaking. Kagoin, that is talking about Rav Tzadik and his and people like him. The Gemara says, He was propositioned again with a, a noble woman. I don't know how they these, these uh, Rabbanim couldn't just run out and say, I'm not doing it. But apparently, it wasn't so simple. On the law, he had to tell her, 
uh, incubated the mechel. I'm very just hungry now, um, and I won't be able to uh, to do it right. And therefore, you have something to eat. Amr um, Allah, so she said to him, I have a, 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 a pig that you can eat. Um, Allah, my nafkanina. He said, oh, I, I don't mind if it's pig. David ha, ach ha. If I'm ready to, ready to commit the sin of znus, uh, with you, so I don't mind eating uh, a pig. Shagarte tenure that she lit up the fire. Kaman when 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 uh, he as soon as the fire in the oven was lit up, kaman chale. Reb walked into the oven and sat there. Salik v'yasev gavai. He opened kaman chale. when he put she put the chazir the pig inside the oven. Reb jumped in and sat right next to the the in the oven next to the chazir. Amalei, she says, my high, what are you doing in the oven? Amalei, the oven, ha, naf ha. I'm trying to tell you, if I'm ready to commit this sin, so I'm going to fall into, into uh, a hot furnace. Amalei, she said to him, she had some sort of respect for Rapsad, like, if I would have known that this bothered you so much, I would have not uh, disturbed you. I would have not propositioned you. Rav Kahana, Hava Tikula, he would sell uh, pins or some, some types of items that was for women. Rashi says it's Salim Shanasim Lam Sham Pochem. It's a little basket that women used to put their sewing material, uh, sewing equipment. So he was a basket salesman. The Vatah Himachnuse, so this, he was propositioned again with, from a noble woman and he could not refuse. I'm alive. He's a, he's a, he's a, let me, okay, I'm ready to do it. Let me just, uh, um, Brush myself up and make myself look nice. So, like he went up, uh, and apparently there was no balcony, so he, got, he managed to get to the roof and he jumped off the roof. and It was pretty high roof that uh, he was going to die, he was going to commit the uh, uh, suicide. So, you have to ask this question, uh, why would he commit suicide? Maybe it would have been a chil Hashem. I'll say Elio, but meantime, Elio flew from the other side of the world. Elio Navi, Kabli caught him. Amale, so Elio Navi told Rav Kana, at Rechatan Arba Meis Psarsi, you, you bothered me to come fly 400 miles to come catch you. Amale, so he said to him, Me Garmli, why did I get into this proposition? Why did I get into this first place? Because I'm selling baskets to women. And this is what happened. La Baniese, I must be, I'm poor. So the so Rab Elio solved this problem. Yavle Shifa the Duran, he gave him a basket full of gold, gold coins and uh, said, you don't have to work anymore. The Gemara continues. It's probably a, a, a hint that if a person who's struggling with his Parnasa and, he, and somehow overcomes his Yetzirah, uh, although he may have complaints against Hashem and he's under stress and he overcomes his Yetzirah, perhaps that is a schus for him to get uh, uh, a big Parnasa that he's not going to have to work anymore. This is a good lesson. So good tomorrow. Rami Le Rabbler Nachman. Rav asked a contradiction to Rav Nachman. Now we learned in the Mishnah. The following mitzvahs you get rewarded in this world, but the principle is, is eaten in the next world. In other words, you get comp the compound interest you, you enjoy in this world, but the principle remains for your reward in the next world. How do you know that? So we say you're going to get a good long life in this world, or my uh, in the next world. So if you run after, chase after tzedakah and, and kindness, you will find chayim tzedakah v'chavay, you're going to get honor in this world, life in the next world. If you bring peace to two people who are fighting, so it's a higher form of, of kindness, we darshan, because it says rat feil, Whatever applied by Gemil's Chasadim will also apply by someone who is a Bakish Sholem. So they both have the common word, so we make like a Xerish Shava to them. The Talmud Torah is your life in this world and gives you long days in the next world. So the Apostle Gemara is saying, Kishuach Hakan also has that type of mitzvah. You enjoy benefits in this world, and, and you're going to get the principle in the next world. If it says the Apostle, So now the Gemara asks the question, if so, if Shuach Hakan is similar to all those other mitzvahs, then you benefit in this world, but the principle remains in the next world. Let the Mishnah uh, list also uh, the, uh, the, the mitzvah Shuach Hakan as Eilud Baram Shalom Eichel Perisayim Baram Mazat. 
And says the Gemara Tana Vishaya, the Tana left it out. Says the Gemara Tana Tana Elo Dvaram Baat Amr Tana Vishaya. The Tana was pedantic and says only these things uh, you're, you're going to get benefit in this world, nothing else. So how can you say Shluch Hakam would be another mitzvah? And the Tana left it out, forgot to mention it. Amarav, Rabbi Rabbi Ibi Azberli, Rabbi Ibi explained this to me. Imru Tzadik Gitayv Kifri Malaleim Yachelo. You say only a good tzaddik will be able to eat the compound interest in this world. Yesh tzaddik, Rabbi Yesh tzaddik she'ed a toif. What's called a good tzaddik? What's called a not good tzaddik? El a toif l'shmayr l'abriyas. If you're someone who does mitzvahs, that's good for heaven and and good for people. For example, for example, uh, you're 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 someone who does chesed, or you're, you're someone who does hashavas sabei. The well, you do something that's uh, that's tzedakah. So then that. <laughs> that's called a tzaddik toy. That's called a good tzaddik. Toiv l'shemayim v'ra'al abriyas. But if you're doing good, only the heavenly work, but you, you're not uh, you're not doing any chesed, anything to good for other kindness for other people. Zeh tzaddik shein toiv. It's not a perfect tzaddik, and therefore that kind of tzaddik will only eat his reward in the next world, but not in this world. Like a similar thing, you say either Russia ki gemol yadav yelsa loy. A Russia Ra. This is a possible you're a, a evil person, but you're a bad evil person. It's, it seems like a redundancy. Is there an evil person that's bad and, and an evil person that's not bad? If you if you if you covered all bases, you're evil to heaven and evil to people, like you're a killer, uh, you steal from people. So then who Russia Ra? Then you're a very evil person. You're called a Russia Ra. Ralish my main is there Russia Shane Ra? If you're only evil to heaven. But not uh, not uh, evil to people. Let's say you're doing arayas or something like that. So then you're a Russia that's not evil, not an evil person for 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 humankind. So what the tarets of the Gemara is shluach hakan, you will not eat the fruits in this world. Why? Because all the other mitzvahs mentioned in that Mishnah of Elu Dvaram, Kibrav Ein. Have our shalom have to do your they are mitzvahs, but they also have to do with an interaction with other people, and therefore that's a tzaddik toy, a good uh, a tzaddik toy. That's a person who could pre malalei and yachelo who will eat the interests of what he has done on this world. But uh, but shluach hakan is just a mitzvah between you and Hashem, and therefore you will not eat the the benefits of that in this in this world. Even though, so you're gonna to have to say the by shluach hakan must be said by Total of uh, Mason and Ilam Haba, but not anything that has to do with this world. Says the Mishnah, has a chus. I just want to point out that uh, you know, we, in our generation, Chaim Kanievsky was a tzaddik toy, as you can see, that besides being being uh, a toy of Taiv Shemaim for sure, uh, with his accomplishments, he was also Taiv Labrius, his, his uh, Kabbalah Kahal was uh, legendary. And says the, and so the Mishnah says, has chus yesh lo kerem, yesh lo peir, as a merit has a principle and it has and it has compound interest. Namer imri tzadikit that you're going to eat the fruits of your labor, uh, your interest. Avera yesh lekarim ve'ein leparis. But in avera we don't have uh, most averas, as we're going to try to say. Most averas is just the avera itself, but it doesn't, you know, compound have a compound interest to it. Therefore, there's no residual punishment. Shnema either rosh or rosh, that whatever you do, you're going to get punished for, but not for. There's a posik that says that even when a Russia does something evil, he's going to eat the, all the interest of that evil deed he will be responsible for. So yes, there are mitzvahs, there are averis, very few averis, but averis are his parents. An avera that, um, that you actually cause that continues to grow, yesh lo peris. The she'ein lo peris, an avera that doesn't produce fruit, ein lo peris, they will not have a compound interest. So there is a type of avera called achil Hashem, where people learn from your action to do bad things. And, the, and their, you know, offsprings and children, or etc., are going to learn from their action. So you're all responsible for that compound interest of that avera. So avera she'ein lo peris is a terrible avera that you continue to get punished for. Says the Gemara, if you think to do a good mitzvah, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu combines it as if you did the mitzvah. HaKadosh listens to your plans. He writes your name down. 
because somebody thinking about him. My luchosh vishmai. What are you thinking about God? His name. I'm Rabasi. I feel like a chash of Adam Lassus mitzvah. The man is why I saw man thought to do a mitzvah and he was held up and he could not do the mitzvah. My love, because the Torah considers it. The pasuk considers it as if you accomplished it. But if you think to do an Avera, besides a Hihur Avera of Znus, but you're thinking to do a, a bad thing. So, let's say you're thinking not to put on film. So, HaKadosh Baruch doesn't consider it to the Maishas. If God sees um, corruption in your heart, he, God's not listening. That whatever is in your thought, you're going to get punished for. There's a pasuk that says that. If you eventually do the action, then you're also punished for the thought and the planning that goes into the action of the evil of the of the avera of the sin. But if a machshava would just remain the thought, but you never did it, so then uh, then Hakadosh Baruch Hu, uh, is not mitzaraf lemaisa. You know, you're thinking of, uh, of vandalizing somebody, your enemy's property. So just thinking about it is not something that Akash Baruch will hold you accountable for. But if you fa- actually follow through with it, then the plans to vandalize somebody's property, uh, you will be responsible for even the thought itself. That uh, that the people are accountable, held accountable for what they're thinking in their heart. So we see that even if you don't accomplish what you wanted to do for a sin, you're going to get accountable for the, even the thought about it, doing the sin. And so the Gemara, that is the exception, only by committing uh, sinning with the Avera of Avera Dezara. We learned before, Hamura Avera and if you deny it as if you kept the whole Torah Kula, and if you and the opposite holds true, if you agree to it, uh, then it's as if you deny the whole Torah. So thinking about doing Avoid Zara is as if you deny the whole Torah. Ula uh, Ula Ama Ula says like this: what is an Avera that you will get punished for uh, that, that that continues to have fruits? In other words, you'll be continue to be punished for it, has like a compound interest attached to it. Avuna said a comment that if a person did an Avera and repeated it the same Avera twice, then you're permitted to do the Avera. Says in Mar you mean you get a free pass, you can do the Avera. When you do something twice and continue to do it, uh, it becomes like you as if there is no Avera, what you're doing. And therefore, let's say if a person accustomed himself to eat not kosher. He did it a few times, and then one time he was trying to buy an non-kosher item, and he didn't end up buying the non-kosher item because it was out, it wasn't in the store. So even though he didn't end up uh, buying the non-kosher item and eating it, he gets punished because he would have bought it had it been there. So it's uh, that's what we're talking about. You get sometimes you get punished even for the planning and the thought process that goes into it, even if you never did the avera. It should be easier for a person to do an Avera. Uh, probably this has to do an Avera that has to do with uh, uh, sexual relations with Zenos. Don't do it in public. Make sure whatever you're going to do, even if you're not listening to me, uh, just make sure don't uh, uh, make a Chil Hashem. Uh, don't don't uh, shame the name of God. By doing it in public. Omar Ablai Zaki, Ablai Zaki said, Imroya Odin, if a person observes Shiitra Miskabra Olaf, that his Yetzahara, his uh, thoughts are so overpowerful, it's like uh, it's like he's, he's he can't control himself. He should go to a place where nobody knows him. And he should put on ugly clothing. Basically, he should, you know, try to look like a bum. And then cover yourself with black clothing, you know, like a homeless person. And then when you feel so low, maybe that will, you know, quiet down Yeh Sahara. The Asa commercially become do what you want. And you'll see that that's an idea to help him stop what he wants to do because he sees how low he can become if he continues to sin, what, what sin leads to. Don't, don't uh, uh, make a Hashem in public. Says the Gemara, Aini, that's not true. 
Uh, you mean you could do the Aveyor in private? But time we learned in the Bible, uh, if, if anybody didn't show care for the honor of his creator, it would be appropriate that he didn't come to this world. Mahi, what's the case? If you observe a, a if you stare at a rainbow, okay, that's that's something that a person should not do. If you do an Avera of Znus, probably, in private, and no one knows about it, you're basically not caring that the about the honor of your creator. Your honor of your creator is everywhere. So your creator is everywhere, so you have to have the fear of God everywhere. And if a person could, uh, has the goal to do the, uh, uh, an Avera privately, it, it's more appropriate that he wouldn't uh, come to this world. It's basically, uh, he, he's ruined himself. Answer to Gemara Kasha, it's not difficult. You just Rabbi Lai said you can do the Avera in private. When you have the ability, and only God knows this, that you can overcome your, your evil inclination, then you should not do the Avera privately. Aha, and the Gemara says that the a person could be in a situation that he could not control himself. And because of that, there is uh, some way that Rabbi Lai said, you better, if you're going to do the Avera, might as well do it in privately. So a person, uh, it's a, uh, a person should be careful. Tanan Hasan, we learned in the Mishnah, there is no credit in a Chil Hashem. Echet Shei Echet Mezid. My Eim Akifin. What does it mean, Eim Akifin? Amar Marzut to Shein Oisim Kechem Veni. They don't perform like a store credit for him. In other words, you make a Chil Hashem, you could expect the punishment to come uh, come quickly. Ma B'Dorei B'Ona Aloi Ma Ma D'Rei B'Ona says Aloi Meshim Hoyse Shkula Machraz that even if if you have a Chil Hashem and you were someone well, 50 50 but Chil Hashem is is within the fifty. Uh, of your sins, then all of a sudden your tails of the scale is skipped, is, is tipped, and you're considered a Russia. So Chil Hashem is something uh, that person should take into account before, even if he's going to commit a sin, the uh, Chil Hashem has to be something to, to, to uh, take into account because it's very difficult to do tshuva on it. Tanu Rabbanon, the rabbis taught, a person should always uh, have a pair. And this should be that if you have nothing what to think about, basically, then you should just imagine that your life is on the balance and you just have one chance to do a mitzvah to tip the scale. So if you if you do it, you should know, and you're thinking about if I do this mitzvah, it'll be good for me. And if I don't do this mitzvah, then something bad is going to happen. Because you do one avera, you could lose many good things that God had in store for you. So a person should always think about in his mind when he has nothing to think about that right now the, the scale is exactly exactly in the middle. So I got to make sure to 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 tip the scale uh, to the other side. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon. The Rabbi the son of Rashim ben Yichai said, "Lefi shoyim nidem acharuba veyochan nidem acharuba." Also, mislacha asher shkriyis asmi is called ha'olim lekavzchus. The ve'verachas olim shkriyis shkriyis asmi is called ha'olim lekavchayba. In other words, Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon just added that not only you should view your, yourself with the scales in balance, but you should view yourself that you're the savior of the world. In other words, that if you're going to do this one mitzvah, you're going to tip the scales. You're going to tip the scales to the to the side. To the winning side, so it, the, the stakes are much higher. Not only your personal, uh, uh, your personal situations at stake, but human civilizations at stake. And if you're going to do this one avera, you tip the scale for yourself to the to the wrong side, and also the the entire planet to the wrong side. Because you do one avera, you can uh, uh, tip the scale. So a person this is, uh, should feel himself as somebody very, very important. Uh, Rav Shem Ben Yechoi says, the person did everything perfectly in his entire life, and he rebelled at the end of his life, then he lost whatever he did. I mean, if, if if you end up if they end up right before you die as a an apostate, then you lost all the good things that you did before, all the mitzvahs. The, the righteousness of the tzaddik will not save him on the day that he dies if he's dying with uh, with transgressions. Even if you are a complete 100% rush in your entire life, and you did shuvah at the last moment, they don't mention anything about your rishai. 
the day uh, 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 that you're doing tshuva, they're not going to mention any of the evil acts that you perform, provided that you do tshuva. So we see that tshuva is, you know, a tshuva is to do tshuva is is not a, a difficult process. That's an impossibility. You could do it all in one day. Just you don't know when that day is coming. So you got to be, uh, you got to prepare yourself that perhaps tomorrow is that day. So you should be doing tshuva all your life. Uh, that said, even though you're going to die without, they're not going to mention anything of the bad that you did, but still you, your, your soul has a lot of stains on it because of the, of, of the, the way you lived life up until you, the time that you did tshuva. Says the Gemara, why would a person, if he does an Avera and he decides to become a Rosh at the end of his life, why does he lose all of his mitzvot? Consider him as a Bainani, because how many Averas is he going to do the last day of his life, considering uh, as, it, as, it, as it compares to all the mitzvahs that he did until then? And why would he lose it? Amram Shlokish of Shaka says, Betoya al Harishainish, because he had, he had regrets on the mitzvahs. See, just like you can do tshuva and, and regret your averis, you could also regret mitzvahs, chas v'shalom, and lose the merit of those mitzvahs. So you got to be proud of yourself for those mitzvahs that you did, even though if a person falls into sin. Dr. Mishnah, kol shi'eshna b'mikna, if you learn chumash, if Mishnah, you learn mishnai, so derech haretz, and you learn how to make a living, how to be proper with people, with your interactions with people, loy v'mehe ruchayte, you're not going to sin very quickly. Shnei amavchut ha-mishur, so behe, you know, take if you have a rope that has the three prongs, to, uh, three parts to it, which is Chumash, Mishnayis, and the way of the world, you're not going to be come apart. Anybody who doesn't learn Chumash, the Tanakh, and doesn't learn Mishnayis, and he doesn't learn the ways of the world, he's not part of civilization. Just learning alone is not going to make you, not going to make it for you. And just doing work alone, secular stuff, is not going to make it for you. You have to have that, you know, the full package. What are righteous people compared to this world? A tzaddik in this world is like a tree that is totally planted in a good place, but its branches are off into a mokam tuma, into a bad place. So what he's trying to say is that God sometimes makes it bad for a righteous person so that when he gets to the next world, he's fully uh, planted in the Olam Haba. When you cut off the branches, then he's totally in a good place. Maybe Yisurim al-Sadiq in Olam Hazar. God brings suffering to Tzadik in Olam Hazar. So he totally inherit Olam Haba. So he should embrace, basically, a person sees not such good things happening to him. Instead of thinking that, oh, why is God doing this to me? God's making a cleansing so that you'll be fully prepared in Olam Haba. Where, and once you get there, you can't make any changes. Allah and Rosham then boil them. Why would our Rosh Hashanah compared to in this world? A tree that's always in a, in, a, in a tummy place and its branches are branched off in a, a, a pure place. When you cut off the branches, it's still in a bad place. When you see a Rosh, he has it good. He gives good to the Rosh in this world. To make them busy, you know, busy in, with materialism. And make them come to the lowest rung on the ladder. God makes them uh, so busy uh, with, with materialistic things that they don't have time to fix uh, what they did and they're, they're, they will get all the reward in this world so that they'll get full punishment in the next world. The Gemara finishes off. Rav and all the elders were around uh, an attic. Somehow they're always in an attic talking and learning. In base Nitza, in the house of Nitza, in Lud. And a question arose. Talmud Gadol, Is it better to learn more or be involved more in mitzvahs? Then Rav Tafim Ba'oma Masagol. It's better to, it's better to be involved in mitzvahs even though you didn't fully learn Kalatar Kula. Then Rav Kiva Oma, Kiva answered Talmud Gadol. It's better off to learn. Then Rav Kula Ba'omru, everybody came to the conclusion, Talmud Gadol. It's better to finish your learning and do as much learning as you possibly can because Shatalma may be the day masa. What follows learning will bring you to, to do the actions and you do the mitzvahs properly. Tanya Rab Lassim, Yaisi, I'm a God of Tamish, Kodmachal, Abayim Shona. God talked about learning 
the Talmud uh, the, but that came before Chala 40 years. The true Muslim is the Chamisha Ma'arba, the Shemitim Shish Ma'achas, the Yoyvelish Me'evishalish. So Rashi makes the, the calculation basically uh, when the people left Mitzrayim, they got the Torah on, on the sixth day of Sivan, in, the, in Sivan. But the, the mitzvahs of Chala and the mitzvah of Shemitah and the mitzvah of Yoyvelish were only came much later, which Chala and Shemitah and Yoyvel, great mitzvahs, hard to do mitzvahs, uh, especially Shemitah and Yoyvel. And yet those mitzvahs came after the Jews were fully entrenched in Eretz Yisrael. Well, we learned over here that uh, that Yoivel came after sixty. Shemitah came after sixty-one years after doing the after leaving Egypt. Yoivel came one hundred and three. The first mitzvah of Yoivel came one hundred and three after the people left Egypt. So the Gemara says, "Meiv Shalosh, Meiv Aben Hava." Didn't they? Uh, Rashi makes the calculation. You look at the Rashi. But basically, Mars' question is, how could you say that Yoivel, the first Yoivel, was 103? Actually, it was 104. Kasava, we learned, with Chilasu Mishamit. So it actually started in the 103. And from the very beginning, the remission of Yoivel and the release uh, of the Yoivel starts from the very beginning of the year, not from the following year. Shem Shalimid Koytel Masa, just like Really, what you see from here, that priority should be given to learn Torah before you start being involved in mitzvahs. So you have to ask yourself, I, you know, am I fully learned, uh, you know, if, uh, to be so involved in doing mitzvahs? Maybe I should take a, use the time that I have and, and study more. So because it's a prioritized, we prioritize learning before doing the mitzvahs. When you come to the Eilam Ha'emes, God's going to question you first about how much Torah did you learn? And then he's going to question you how many mitzvahs did you perform? That in the first thing of, uh, they're going to uh, is going to be questioned when you come to judgment is ratios of Torah. Did you learn uh, did you use your free time for Torah? So that's the first question they're going to ask you. A person has a free time. Did you did you, did you learn Torah with it? Just like the punishment comes before uh, the mitzvahs, the reward that they're going to give you for learning will precede the reward that we're going to give you before doing the mitzvahs. Because they spent the time learning Torah, preserving the Torah in their mind so that they don't forget. And therefore, uh, right away, the, the schar, the reward for that, will happen prior to getting reward for actually doing the mitzvahs. So the Mishnah said, you don't, if you don't, if a person is just like a, a boar, in other words, he doesn't, he's not knowledgeable in Chumash, Mishnayas, and he's not knowledgeable in secular activities. That person, you cannot trust him when he has testimony. He's, he's bound to lie because he doesn't have, uh, since he's not part of human civilization, he has no uh, shame. He has no inner shame. No, he's not in touch with his self-esteem. If someone eats in the, in the gutter, you're, you're, you're like a dog. It's not appropriate to eat a, a pizza in the street. Others say, you, you disqualify from saying testimony. Allah is like the Yesh Amrim, that if you see somebody eating the street and he's eating, let's say, a whole sandwich in public, which is not the, the way of the world, people eat in private. Uh, so therefore, you cannot have this person say testimony. Dorosh Bar Kapora, Rab Kapora taught us, Ragza, Ragza, we go to them, Allah of a days, if someone is constantly in an angry mood, so then, like also Biyada, he did not gain anything, El Ragza Nusa, he just got high blood pressure, that's all you get from it, because you're not accomplishing anything, speaking to people in an angry tone, and, and just constantly being angry. Laudun Toiv, for someone who has good nature, Matimo is Primasa, you'll benefit from your, from your, the fruits of your labor. If you don't learn Chumash, Mishnayis, and you're not in the ways of the world, you should, a person, if you see such a person, don't even try to befriend him. If he's not working on himself, then you should just make a netter that you're not going to have benefit from him and you're not going to take benefit from him because he could influence you even if he's not in the location, even if he's not in your location. The place where this type of person sits is a place of scoffers. You see, because since he has nothing else on his mind, he's always putting down other people. So he's not thinking about Mishnah, he's not thinking about Chumash, and he's not thinking about business. So such a person 
what else is he thinking about? He's thinking about what everybody else is doing wrong. And because of that, just by sitting in his place, even when he's not there, it has an effect of you, a negative effect for you. Hadunallah Haisha Niknas, uh Rebsha Health, which will have a good Shabbos and a and an easy fast on Yom Kippur.